once again. Just uh, most of you know, uh, Pastor Dave is away on a family vacation. He is uh, currently suffering in a warmer climate than us all <laughs> um, at the moment. But he sends his love and misses you all very much, uh, very much. Also, um, in addition to that, our youth are traveling back from snow camp, so keep them in your prayers for traveling mercies as they're on their way back, and I can't wait to hear what God has done in their lives. I always remember, like I, I, I would remember uh, being a leader on the trips for the youth, and it was always incredible to see God move in a specific way in their lives each and every time we would go away. We would go away. Also, on March 27th, we will be having our first water baptism of the year. We're excited to hear your testimonies and what God is doing in and through your life. If, uh, if you have a relationship with Jesus and have not been water baptized, then now is truly your time. Now is truly your time. I love water baptisms this time of year, for sure. <laughs> and uh, it's also a prerequisite for membership. So if you are, we are having membership later on in the year. So if you are interested in becoming a member and you currently have not been water baptized, um, definitely don't hesitate to let us know and then sign up. You have a month, so you have plenty of time uh, to let us know um, and pray about it. But uh, this morning's assignment from God is found in the book of Nehemiah. See, Nehemiah was a very small and short man, but he had a big calling. He had a big calling. So I want to start by giving some context to what is going on here as we start in the book of Nehemiah. See, at this point in history, the Jewish nation was destroyed and the city of Jerusalem was conquered by the Babylonians. See, the Babylonians conquered and deported almost everyone from the city for 70 years, and it turned into a ghost town, and it was almost completely forgotten about. If you ever seen, like, The Walking Dead, think like that, minus the zombies. For the ghost, minus the zombies for the ghost town. But when God is involved, nothing is impossible with him. See, the Jews were held captive in Babylon. They began to make homes for themselves there and just settled in the land, even when God had set a place up for them to occupy called the promised land. See, that place was still there, even though, even though they were in another land. So do not settle in a place where God has not called you. Maybe if you're in a spot in... God knows exactly where you are right now and do your best to be. God knows exactly where you are right now. So give it your all right there. But when God comes to find you and the calling that he has on your life, be flexible. Don't get stuck in the moment of time when you should be moving on, whether that's emotionally, spiritually, or emotionally or spiritually or in an actual place. You see, many still followed the true and living God of, the four, of their forefathers, but they had not returned to the land that God had promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, God had this land set up for them for a reason, and it would be in their best interest to get back there to prosper as a nation. You see, a small number of, of the Jews returned to the promised land after 70 years of captivity. They returned in the days of Ezra to rebuild the temple. See, Nehemiah begins 100 years after, after the first captives came, after the first captives came back to the promised land and 150 years after Jerusalem was destroyed. See, previously in the book of Ezra, they tried to rebuild the walls but failed, and they were stopped by their enemies. And this is where we pick up this morning in the book of Nehemiah. See, Nehemiah was concerned for his people who had escaped and gone back to the city. They came to him and told him 
They said, the remnant there in the province who had survived in the exile is in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. This is greatly troubled. This greatly troubled him severely, which leads to the verse where we will be covering this morning. It's in Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4. It says, As soon as I heard the words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days and continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. See, I will be speaking on building blocks this morning. And with the building blocks, with building blocks of any situation, see, I'll be speaking on building blocks of any situation when it comes to walking with God and his plan for your life. See, a building block is defined as a unit of construction or composition and I have four points this morning. First is a threshold, then time, trial, and triumph. You see, I will explain through the book of Nehemiah how these four points apply to your life at any given time. You see, my first point here is the threshold. The threshold. It's a place or point of entering or beginning. Whenever you build anything, you need a proper threshold, a proper beginning or foundation, which sets the structure in place. And for us, that proper foundation is Jesus. See, this word came to Nehemiah that the walls of Jericho were in ruin and the people were not safe. They were in constant distress of the safety of their families and they were stressed out all the time. See, maybe you're worried and stressed, but you told no one about it. See, the good thing about our God is that he knows, he sees, and he acts. He is for you and not against you. See, Nehemiah's foundation was set. His body was in Persia, but his heart was focused on his people and the God who truly answers. He was doing exactly what he was supposed to be doing in Persia, and by doing that, his assignment came to him. The call of God came to him. See, his foundation was set. He was doing the very thing that God called him to do. And by doing that, it came to him. This is super encouraging, if you ask me. Because in any given place, at any moment, God's call can come to your life and interrupt what you got going on right now at the moment. And that's awesome. That's awesome if you ask me. So when you read the scriptures, you understand that God has a calling and a plan for your life, but you might not know how to figure it out. But God's calling will find you. See, this happened in my own life. See, God began to work in my life at an expedited pace, probably when I was around 21. Previously, before that, I always had a relationship with God, and, 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 I would, and I would speak to him all the time. But what happened was God moved my life around and separated me from some people and began to truly speak into my life at this given time. And that was right around the time where I ended up starting going back to church. And at this expedited pace, God moved me from just going to church, letting me know that he has a call for my life. I went to Bible college, and then God did a deep work in my life in Bible college. I graduated. I got married. Then I ended up going back to the very job that I was at since the year 2000. Now, if you ask me, this is 2012. So I've been at this job currently at that point in time, for 12 years. And I'm wondering, I'm like, God, what in the world are you doing right now? And you may be in that place. You're like, God, what are you doing right now? I know, I have a, I, I know you have a call for my life. 
you know, I know that you have a plan for my life, but what in the world are you doing right now? You see, I was all fired up because I just came out of Bible college. I was like, all right, I'm going into ministry. And then I ended up back at the job and I'm like, God, what are you doing right now? See, and this leads me to my second point, which is time. Which is time. See, Nehemiah heard the assignment, and then he went down to sit down, and he went to pray. Now now was his time to get into the presence of God. See, God affirms you, he calls you, and then he typically sends you back to the same place you were just at. And he does this for a specific reason, to build character in you and to also get you used to his voice speaking to you so you can know that no matter what season you're in in life, you can understand that God is speaking to you and you have a clear connection to everything that he wants to say in your life. See, do you know how long Nehemiah just prayed and did not do anything but pray? He did that for four months. Four months. He didn't tell a soul about what God had told him. See, in the culture we live in, we have complete access to Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, everything that's going on. And you think you hear from God and then you got to like scream it on your Facebook profile or share a picture on your Instagram and be like, look at everything that God just told me. But what if the very thing that God told you is just for you and it's not for everyone else? See, see, we got to get really good at just hearing from God for ourselves. Of course, when God's speaking, everything could apply, but he, but he has something specific that he wants to tell you. And what happens is when you, when you tell too many people, or you do that, it, it kind of takes away from the, the specificity that God is speaking directly to you. Because there could be general things that he wants to say, but he's listening and he knows your name. See, there's a couple of different things, a couple of different people in the Bible that stood out to me where God spoke to them and then they went directly back to what God was doing, what they were doing previously for God. David was one of them. He was anointed king and he went back to tending sheep, meditating and praying for what God was going to do next. Then Elisha, he was plowing an ox in the field. Elijah found him and threw his mantle on him and told him to follow Elijah and he was just shadowing him at that time. He didn't do much. He just soaked in everything that Elijah was doing, and he truly became a student. See, Joseph had a couple of grandiose dreams, and he told, and he told too many people about it. And then, in turn, his brothers turned against him completely. Threw him, a, threw him in a pit and actually wanted him dead. And then, lastly, is Mary, Jesus' mother. The angel came to her, and she pondered the things in her heart. See, what if for a season you were just supposed to be and not do? Just soak in God's presence and take in everything that he speaks to you because what God speaks to you might just be for you. See, I know that if we lay the foundation, I know when first when our when we lay our foundation and we get in a relationship with God, we get all zealous and we hear from God and we move immediately. And what we do is God's just calling us to not say anything and just love people. See, a couple of times I moved out of pocket because I was straight out of Bible college and I was all fired up and I was back at CVS and I was like, all right, how's God going to use me? And I was like all excited. And I don't know if, I think I might have moved out of pocket in a way where I know God's word doesn't come back void, but I know like now as I grew up, 
and I got older, I realized that I wish I would have heard from God in those moments and actually, actually listened instead of just being like, oh, God told me this, and then I did X, Y, and Z. Because now looking back, I'm like, I wish I would have listened to what God said at the moment and acted less. See, so Nehemiah gets to Jerusalem, the promised land. He begins to look at the damage, and he says, okay, I am needed here. So after four months, after four months, he goes and checks the scene. He goes and checks the scene. He lets the people in Persia that came with him know that he was going to be staying there to help rebuild the wall. So they began to rebuild previously the walls that were destroyed. See, the enemies of the land thought Jerusalem was destroyed, but now was truly the time to rebuild. See, what in your own life is destroyed that God is calling you to rebuild in this moment? See, could it be a relationship? Could it be your finances? As we heard from Robin, tithing is a great place to start. Could it be your marriage? Could it be a business? Maybe you're about to write off, write it off, but God is here in this moment whispering in your ear saying, do not give up on that dream, that relationship, or your finances. See, the key to success is to do exactly what God is calling you to do no matter how long it takes. See, they begin to rebuild the wall, they put their hand to the plow, and they do not look back. You see, isn't it funny whenever you decide to move forward on the plan that God has for you, trials show up. Trials just happen. You see, this guy named, named Sanballat showed up, and he was angry, bitter, and he didn't want things to move forward with the wall, so he began to get his posse together and planned to stop the wall from being built, from taking place. See, he and his friends were actually planning to kill them to stop the wall from being built. I'm thankful that with God, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. And the same thing in your life. Whenever, you're, whenever you hear from God, and you begin to move out. When the trials come, know that the weapon may be formed, but it will not prosper. It will not prosper. Whenever you do anything for God, there will always be a trial that you will have to walk through. See, so after 14 years, I end up moving from my job at CVS to Bank of America, which is a great change of pace. And then a little bit of time went by, and then the trials started. The trials started. So if you ask, I was a customer service representative, and whenever you get upset and you want to call customer service, just think of how angry you are. And then there's this poor person on the other end of the line, in this case was me. And at the time, I'm just sitting there, no context of your situation, and you're just coming in hot screaming and angry and just ready to come at my neck. And all I'm doing is just sitting there. I'm like, oh, thank you for calling such and such. My name is Jared. How am I help you? And then people just go off. So that's, that happened for three and a half years. That was a trial for three and a half years for me, if you ask me. So the proper perspective, sometimes, now, sometimes I go to call and I'm like, okay, I'm gracious with the people on the other line. And then I'm like, all right, I may be upset, but I'm going to like let it be for a little bit. And then they say something to just tick me right off. And then I just go off the handle. I just go off the handle. Sometimes I call people out. If they tell me wrong information, I'm like, no, that's wrong. I worked here. I know better than you. <laughs> that's a true story. That's, that's a true story. I told someone on the phone, I was like, you know what? No, that's not the case. I know better than you. That... She was dying on that mountain. She was dying on that hill. So much so that I had to hang up on her. Then I had to call back later. <laughs> I had to call back later. But uh, it got so bad 
for the Jews that at this time they had to stay working on the wall with a weapon in one hand and a building block in the next. And they had to take shifts. They had a night shift and then a day shift. And because they needed to make sure that what God wanted them to do got done. You see, in that moment, in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 20, it said, in a place where you hear the sound of the trumpet, God will fight for us. You see, God gave them a promise. See, God always gives you a promise in the trial one way or another. Either it's a new promise or he reminds you of what he already had spoken over your life. Either way, you're literally an all-state commercial. You're in good hands. <laughs> but God has your back in the trial. You see, I love that graphic that has the picture of what we think success is versus what success actually is. See, we think success is a straight line up with no setbacks. But success is take two steps forward, three steps back, five steps forward, three steps back. It's like, it's like, it's this large graph. It's this large graph. And this kind of describes life and success. This next statement, it says, it seems like this road's never going to end. On this road, there's a lot of hills and mountains, peaks and valleys, and even a lot of potholes on this road. See, it's never smooth on the road of life. And that is what success truly is. See, there's a threshold, time, and trials, which leads me to my last point of triumph. Triumph. See? Finally, Nehemiah finishes the wall. But in finishing the wall, there were not many people there to inhabit the city. See, at that point, Nehemiah lists all of the returning exiles that returned to the promised land. See, next, Ezra reads the law, and they dedicate the day to the Lord and calls this day holy. See, when you take time and listen to God, when you take the time and listen to God, when his call comes to you and he shares his plan for your life, then you should know that success is truly certain because it was God's plan for your life. You see, take that time to spend with God, let him develop you in the cocoon of life and have him set you up to fly. See, you will be able to withstand everything that comes against you when you have a word from God for your life. See, Ezra reads them the scriptures and they were all convicted and guilty. They were sad, but as we learned last week, conviction is a good thing. It's not to feel shame or guilt. It's to say, with God's help, I will never do X, Y, or Z again. See, he told them that it was a time of celebration because the Lord had truly become their strength. You see, the people of Israel came back into the fold, returned to the promised land, and started again. You see, this was their day of triumph. See, this pattern I'm going over right now is truly a cyclical cycle. See, you see, throughout life, we have a threshold, a time and a beginning. Then time that is waiting for the promise to happen. Then a trial in which we feel like we are never going to make it. And then, but that leads to triumph. And then we begin at the beginning again. So every season in life, you have these four building blocks. A threshold, time, a trial, and triumph. 
See, a great reminder of our threshold or our beginning or our foundation is communion. And you'll be taking that in a couple of moments. And as we come to the communion table this morning, we realize that the ground is level at the cross. And we are setting our foundation, which is, which is the starting place of our faith. So we all need reminders at times, and it doesn't matter how long you have been a Christian for. Life is life and can throw curveballs at us all. It can throw curveballs at us all. We could, be, we could be filled with all sorts of fear at any point in the journey, but Jesus centers us in him, and we truly remember what this life is all about. I just want to call Rob up as we get ready to take communion. And I just want to, going to pray for the bread in a moment. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to share in something like this together. We know that as you sat with your disciples, you reminded them that the bread is just a representation of your body, but that we should take it seriously, and that any time we gather together that we would be reminded of what you went through for us. So this morning as we're sitting here together, help us to focus our attention on what it is you're speaking to us specifically through this message, but also just throughout the longevity of our lives, Lord, you've been speaking to us. So as we break this bread and we eat this, Father, this morning, would you, would you just continue to remind us and help us to tune our ears to your voice. We take the bread and eat it. And at this time when we pray over the juice, God, I just, God, I thank you that you center us in these moments. God, what this blood, what this cup represents is your blood of your son that got shed for our sins that leaves us white as snow. That leaves us in the moment where we could just stand here. We could stand here knowing that we are holy in your sight because of what you did for us on that cross. We love you, we praise you. In your name we pray, amen. Love you guys so much. I hope you have a phenomenal Sunday and, uh, and a great week coming up. And uh, can't wait to see you next week. Hey, Pastor Dave here. Just want to say thank you so much for tuning in to our YouTube channel. Uh, make sure if you want to stay up to speed with all the videos that we're going to post in the future, you subscribe to our channel and uh, share it. Get the word out to everybody. Lastly, make sure you go to our website. We have our DNA there, everything the church uh, is about here at Glad Tidings Community Church and all the different ministries that we offer. You can go to www.gtcc.church. Again, thanks for tuning in. God bless you.